Welcome back to the Politics and Media programme. The English Defence League attempted to march through the London borough of Tower Hamlets last Saturday. The borough has a long history of seeing off the far right, stretching back to the battle against Oswald Mosley's British Union of Fascists in the 1930s. Today, the anti-fascist alliance includes members of the community, socialists, anarchists, with Jews and Muslims swapping places as the main target of the fascists, although representatives of the Jewish community still remain a presence on the counter-demonstrations. But with 600 EDL supporters vastly outnumbered by the thousands of anti-fascist demonstrators and nearly all of those arrested coming from the anti-fascist groups, is the EDL really a threat to our communities? And are the right tactics being employed to combat the extreme right? Let's take a look at this report. On Saturday, the 7th of September, the far-right street group, the English Defence League, once again tried to march through the borough of Tower Hamlets in order to, in their own words, oppose radical Islam. Both the Home Office and the Met Police came under pressure to ban the march for fears it would provoke racial tensions in the borough. While the march was still allowed to go ahead, the group were forbidden to travel any further east than Mansell Street. A High Court appeal by EDL leader Stephen Yaxley Lennon, who also goes by the pseudonym Tommy Robinson, was rejected and they were effectively prevented from entering the borough, with the anti-fascist counter-demonstration also kept behind police lines in Altab Ali Park. The park is named after a young Bangladeshi man who was murdered in a racist knife attack in 1978. Everything we have, all the gains, all the rights, were won by the struggle and sacrifice of those below. We stand on their shoulders and it is up to us to owe it to them to keep fighting back wherever the racists march. We were born in this country. This is our country. We are part of this society and we will continue to be a part of this society the day we die. Our children will be a part of this society. My grandchildren will be a part of this society and they will continue to exist in peace serenity for all of time. So the EDL may think that they have, they'll make a change. They won't make a change. There are only a few. They're a minority and they fool themselves in thinking that they can make a change. Because what they stand for is something weak. What they stand for is something that has no basis. We here, we live, we bring everything we do, we do together. We are united. The East End has a long history of resistance to the far right, with the famous 1936 Battle of Cable Street taking place not far away, in which Oswald Mosley's fascists were driven out of the borough. This today is taking me back many, many years. The Battle of Cable Street. The fascists then were the Mosleyites, who were intending to clear all the Jews out of Tower Hamlets at that time stepping with horses, with buttons, they tried us. We didn't move, and at the end of it, the government at that time had to de declare no march for the fascists on Tower Hill. We won because we stood out in the fight against racism and fascism. Many have attributed the rise in far-right activity to the panic caused by the murder of drummer Lee Rigby in Woolwich in May. Attacks on mosques have been on the increase, ranging from graffiti to incendiary devices. A mosque burnt down on the 6th of June in Muswell Hill was found to have the EDL initials scrawled on it, although the group denied responsibility. On Thursday, Security Minister James Brokenshire spoke on the dangers of far-right activity and the need for the reporting of hate crime. As you know, the most significant terrorist threats we face come from Al-Qaeda, its affiliates, and like-minded terrorists. That's the ideology most likely to inspire a terrorist attack in Britain today. But we know from recent events that although the far-right may not be on the same scale as Al-Qaeda, their defensive and racist ideology can still have deadly consequences. The demonstration resulted in the arrest of over 300 people, including Stephen Yaxley Lennon, who was allegedly arrested for incitement. The presence of around 3,000 police officers far outnumbered the around 600 EDL members. 286 anti-fascist demonstrators were arrested for violating the conditions set on the march. Although some have suggested EDL support is dwindling, anti-immigrant sentiment is on the rise. What many will be asking is whether the EDL are a cause of this or just a symptom of a far larger problem. Alex MacDonald, Islam Channel.
With me in the studio to discuss this are Wayman Bennett, Joint Secretary of Unite Against Fascism, Dr. Mohammed Abdul Bari, Chair of the East London Mosque, Leon Silva from the East London Central Synagogue, and Abdul Wahab, otherwise known as the former jungle music star of the 90s, UK Apache. Um, welcome to the programme, everybody. Um, so, Wayman, good day on Saturday. They didn't get managed to march through Tower Hamlets. I think it was a very good day. I think it was brilliant that the community, socialists, trade unionists, um, men, women, um, gay and straight, all came together to say um, we reject the fascists from being able to follow in the footsteps of Oswald Mosley and coming to Tower Hamlets. And I think the direct threat to attack the um, LMC is something in the wake of the attack that's taken place inside Marswell Hill and in Harlow is something which we have to take seriously. And I think it's important that we stood together in unity against them. Mm. And you feel the same way, man. But I mean, yeah, the, the, obviously, there is a direct threat to the mosque, isn't there? We are happy that uh, all, all in the community came up on that day. And um, as the women has mentioned, it's uh, Muslims, non-Muslims, and with people with all backgrounds, and um, from everywhere. In fact, many people from across London did turn up, and it was a carnival atmosphere in Alta Valley Park in Whitechapel Road. And uh, mosque volunteers and others did a wonderful job. Mm. Uh, Leon, there's a very long history, of course, we mentioned it in the, in the introduction of opposing fascism in the East End of London. The, the Jewish community have historically been a very uh, large part, part of that. Um, do, do you see it as important that they're, that, that they're still represented, even though in the minds of perhaps the EDL themselves, they're no longer the main target community? Oh, absolutely. Um, not only are the many similarities and um, the kind of venom that's directed against the Muslim community is clearly a direct descendant of, through fascism, through racism, of the kind of things that were levelled at the Jewish community. But it's important as Jews, uh, with our experience, that we do stand up together with our Muslim brothers and sisters. Um, you're facing exactly the same threats that we had. And when the English Defence League, by their very name, they call themselves English, well, to them, am I English? What am I? I'm not Anglo-Saxon, I'm not Norman, I'm not Celtic. Who do they actually mean? Who do they think they're representing? It's certainly none of us. Mm. Uh, do you think, do you think that, um, that, uh, that this moment where the EDL might have got some traction in the wake of the of the Woolwich killing, um, uh, uh, do you think it's a sort of tribute to this kind of breadth of um, attachment to multiculturalism that perhaps they aren't getting the traction that we might have worried they would have got? Well, I mean, <clears throat> first of all, I was very happy to attend, you know, the uh, the rally, and uh, from a personal point of view. Um, uh, you know, the diversity of the people that was there shows the, the understanding of the whole point that the EDL are not getting supported as they, as they like to get support, as you said, in regards to the killing. You know, so at the end of the day, we're there to, you know, campaign and, to the, and, and, to, and show the, the EDL that what their mission is, is going to, it's not going to be accomplished. So even if they try to focus on the killing of Woolwich, that's not a reason for them to, you know, that's one person out of, you know, out of a whole community you know, and we would say that even even in regards to what that what that uh, individual did, it's got nothing to do with Islam. So they can't put a finger on, on that and say that's connected to Islam. Well, well, I mean, I mean, this is a you know particular moment, as I say, in the wake of the uh, Woolwich killing. If there was ever a moment where they might have hoped to have got some traction, um, it doesn't look as if the n numbers were significantly different than than before uh, the, the Woolwich killing. Uh, are you? Pleased that the sort of depth of multiculturalism seems to have been resistant to that, uh, t to the uh, attempt to exploit that killing. I, I think two things. Really, I think firstly the fact that when the EDL immediately came on the scene, we identified them as being racist, Islamophobic, and linked to fascist, meant that when we have moments like um, Lee Rigby, um, death of Lee Rigby, that it's possible that people already knew that Stephen Yoxley was formerly in the BNP. They already knew what these people were around. And I think that if you look in France or if you look in Holland, people didn't realise that until these people became mass organisations. It's the most important lesson is we stopped them early on. I also think there's a warning though. One warning I'd say is that um, I don't believe UKIP is a fascist party, but I'm sorry, but there's other people in the wings trying to make benefit from immigration, Islamophobia, and I think the danger is that Islam, multiculturalism stood firm, but other people are attempting to undermine it. 
Alderbarry, do you think that's right, that there's a kind of climate on the right um, um, among political forces that aren't themselves fascist but are creating the conditions under which people like the EDL can get some traction? Well, firstly, EDL criticizes Muslims and it has attacked many, many, many mosques, but they probably uh, try to ignore the fact that most Muslims, all Muslims, they came out against this horrific murder of Lee Rigby. So um, it's deliberate from them. They are exploiting the situation. And the political, um, some of the political elements probably get, um, get um, um, traction from this. They get, uh, they get uh, probably some um, ammunition for this to whip up anti-Muslim hatred. I agree with Leon that uh, it's a joint endeavor, and uh, Muslims are now more or less Jew Jews in this in, the, in this area. But fortunately, like then, today we have seen the total unity of the whole community against this fascist group. Mm. And, and uh, did that have to be constructed? Because there was some, you know, initial kind of um, concern, was there not, among the Muslim community about joining the anti-fascist demonstrations? Do you think that's now been overcome? And do you think that, that there's an effective unity now? Well, that is that is unity. Only only fact is the fear factor. Whether, um, as happened on the days, um, some Muslim young people were arrested. I don't know wh where they were, and uh, so there is a fear factor that uh, by participating in the dem demonstration, some of them might get arrested. Mm -hmm. So that's why some of the parents are worried about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think when it comes to anti-fascist movement, they are part and parcel of this. Mm -hmm. Leon, I mean that's uh, you know one of the remarkable statistics from the day, apart from the numbers on each side, is something in excess of 260 people um, arrested. The overwhelming majority of those seem to be from the anti-fascist demonstration. Uh, they were bussed to police stations on the outskirts of the uh, of the city before before being released. Um, th th uh, do you have questions about the, the policing? Yes and no. From what I understand, this was after the main demonstration and that they went into an area where the police had said, don't go. Um, by and large, I think the police did behave um, effectively. But again, with echoes of the 1930s, then, and I, I actually think there has been an official apology, I'm, I'm not certain of this, but the police at the time were the ones who were trying to allow Mosley and his black shirts to march, because technically they did have the legal right. Mm. And, do so. and of course, Cable Street was as much a battle with the police as it actually it was, was with the. More so, in fact. Yeah. Um, the fascists themselves actually stood back. I must just add, um, very briefly, that one of the great ironies of the present situation, unlike the fascists, who didn't really in the 30s hide their extremism, the EDL claimed to be an anti extremist organization. Mm. Yet, of course, who are the extremists? Mm. They're the ones who are condemning an entire world religion, one of, one of the great monotheistic faiths and its adherents. Mm. Uh, were you surprised by the, by, by the policing and by those n numbers arrested among the, the anti-fascists? Actually, I was surprised by the, the numbers arrested. I, I really didn't know because I kind of left um, before this happened. But what I saw from my point of view was a community that came together from all different nations, all different religions to support the cause, and I was very happy about that. The thing what saddens me, it brings back my, uh, my old school days when, when I was, you know, in my era, when I was young, when the National Front was, you know, at bay, and, and I, I experienced it personally where they used to, you know, we had skinheads um, attacking my house, attacking me, in the, you know, as a, uh, personally. And I saw this and, and you know, to, to think that in this time, in 2013, we have a group like this, a right-wing group that can come, you know, and try to bring this back into society when society has changed now, when you can see that England is a multicultural society, diverse, and uh, predominantly most people that live in England, are, you know, are not supporting their cause and will not support their cause. And uh, on the other side of the fence, I think the police done a really good job. To be honest, I have to give them credit. They're, they've done a good job. For those who got arrested, um, you, you're bound to have some people who are not thinking correctly. You know that we're here today for a peaceful demonstration. Mm. We're here today to show. You know, at that time, at that day, we're, we're, we're to show the people that, that we are unified and we're not divided. And like the EDO, I think personally, they're lost souls. Mm. <laughs> you know, and uh, they, they, you know, if they if they, if they came to uh, and, and and to see what what we are. And I think a lot of them don't really realise even about Islam anyway, to be honest. I don't think they even have the knowledge on Islam or the education well, it's on Islam. It's quite interesting that, I mean, in, in a way, I mean, we all talk about the multicultural nature of the society, but, I mean, 
the statistics show that, that London is a, well, it's a predominantly non-white city now. So I mean, I, so I mean, what does it what does it mean for for them to say they're the English Defence League? This, well, this is, is very this upsetting. I mean, you look at a name that I took as an artist, UK Apache. Yeah. I represented the UK back in 1990s and yeah, 1994. I went to America right, to perform, and I used to wear a Union Jack around my head. So if they're trying to say I'm not British, you can't get more British than me in, in regards to the, even the track that I came out that I'm well known for, Original Nutter. Mm. You know, <laughs> unfortunately, I burst their bubble. I'm a Muslim as well. Mm. That must give them nightmares. Mm. You know, <laughs> but you know, this is it. Mm. So. <laughs> Wait a minute. Just let me ask you about the uh, about the uh, the sort of surroundings here, because um, uh, first of all, uh, they didn't march in Tower Hamlets, which was their main objective, but they did march in in Southwark, and the the leader of Southwark Council was saying, look, we don't want them here either. So, first question: How we're going to deal with with, with that? Second question. Um, a lot of those being arrested now seem to have bail conditions which say that they're not allowed to protest against the EDL. So what's your view of the way the police dealt with the demonstration? There's, there's two views. I think the, 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 what the police said was that, that nobody in East London was going to allow the EDL in there and therefore they had to police to that situation. I think that's true. The, the majority of people said if you bring the EDL in there, we will stop them. All right. Then, therefore, the police said, faced with the mass of people from the mayor all the way through that coalition, they can't go there. So then the question came about what they were going to allow the EDL to do. I personally think they shouldn't have been allowed to go anywhere. 600 people turn around to most of the population of London and say, we would like to attack one of your community centres in daylight. And people said, no, I think the arrests were disproportionate. Part of the problem is... You can have a section 12 and 14 in an area where people come from outside. When people live there, I'm on my way home to that place over there, but there's a section 14 that says you can't go home, and then you arrest them. I think that's a really big mistake. And what do you make of the bail conditions? With well, the, I, I mean, the I mean it's, a, uh, it's a serious infringement of people's well, political liberty. I mean, even, if, even if you could prove that they committed a crime on this day, to give them conditions which says that they can't peacefully and lawfully protest on other days, that's, uh, it's the use of the, of the law for a political purpose, isn't it? Well, I'm against those kind of bail conditions, because if somebody says, I don't want Nazis walking past my house where I live, then they've, they've got every absolute right to say that. I don't believe you can say that on that day, if there's any evidence against them, they have to do that. They can't restrict them that, com that completely. But also, it's, I think it's about the 14th time that Tommy Robinson's been arrested for incitement. It's the third time he's come to, fourth time he's come to, to Hamlets with the same, same, same intent. Why is the law being used so rigorously against people that oppose him and technically not being used against someone who's been in jail for the, the same crime repeatedly? Isn't it about time Tommy Robinson's told he cannot come to Tower Hamlets permanently, as he was told in Waltham Forest? And actually, that would mean that young people aren't being criminalised because they're simply going about their business or making sure that their community is safe. Mohammed, do you, th do you think that's the, that, that, that really what the the community is now saying to the authorities is really fourth time is at least four times too, uh, it's too, too many. Much. It's too, too many. And in fact, uh, 10,000 people petitioned to the Home Secretary and two of the Tower Hamlet's MPs wrote to the Home Secretary personally. Tower Hamlet's mayor uh, was seeking an appointment to the Home Secretary. He was snubbed. So it's the whole of Tower Hamlet's, not only Muslims, it's the whole of Tower Hamlet's came against EDL coming to that borough. And it creates a lot of anxiety and fear, and uh, with young people now arrested, uh, some of them probably will have, uh, will have mark in their life. So wh whose benefit is it? Mm. Mm. Do you think this is enough now? Do you think there's got to be a sort of sea change with this? Because otherwise, there's, uh, you know, I, I don't imagine that however small the EDL get, they will ever not want to sort of try and poke their hamlets. But, uh, I mean, there's got to be some um, intervention here which stops this being... Repeated, hasn't it? Absolutely. It should be made absolutely clear that they can't come to the area. I mean, it's interesting to note every area you have a complete cross section and you have cross sections of views. Was there a single group from anywhere in Tower Hamlets actually coming out and saying, We support the EDL? There was none whatsoever. So it's patently obvious they don't belong there. But there's also a subtle anti Semitism. Which, of course, they deny. You know, they wave Israeli flags to be provocative. Um, Robinson actually disguised himself grotesquely as a rabbi on one of the demonstrations where he wasn't allowed to be himself. And as soon as he revealed himself, I think he was promptly arrested. Mm. But, yeah, enough is enough. How many more times 
do we need, I mean, we should get together and we do get together simply in friendship and to display um, our vibrant multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-religious community, but we've had enough of having to do it in order to prove a point. Mm. There's not, there should be no need to prove that point. Mm. I mean, I, I mean, what do you think the mood is among young people? Because, I mean, as you were saying, um, in, 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 this is now uh, how many generations in Tower Hamlets are having to, having to, to, to say this? I mean, you said it once for one generation and saying it again now for another. Exactly. I mean, you know, um, I think, like the, uh, the, the the brother said, and uh, the rest of the guests are saying, is it's, it's, it's enough now. I mean, the young people do get intimidated. So you know, it's like an animal. If you push an animal in the corner, he attacks. You see, and this is what the these the media are feeding upon. You know, and they like that because when 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 that those things happen and the media gets involved, then it makes the Muslims look like a community of crazy people. You know, but we're not. As you, and 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 that's what they don't like to see that we're we're peaceful people. You know, we live in the community. We uh, we've been we've been here from the beginning, and we're still going to be here. And we contribute to the community in all in all in all ways, like financially. Uh, you know, through the NHS, through sports, through artistic ways, many different ways. So I mean, I think in, like the brother, uh, what we're saying, the guest saying, is enough is enough. And uh, the young people, um, they well, they need to be directed in the right way. You know, that's another thing, obviously, that we're trying to do our, our work. The, 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 the responsible imams and, and the community leads are trying to direct them in, in a positive way. Like, look, don't, they're not our, 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 our role models. They're not our role models. We don't follow them in those issues of violence. You know, we deal with peaceful means, protesting like what happened uh, on, on the day. And uh, this is the way forward. Mm. Well, I mean, so what, what, are the plan, what are UF's plans now, I mean, in terms of, 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 of attempting to stop a repeat of this? We spoke to Mayor Luftaram and wants to do something positive before the EDL come, to say this is a huge Muslim, black and white community, to say you want to understand Islam, here it is, whatever it is, and that we want thousands of people to, um, to be there. But also, I want to say something that Leon pointed out. The route that the EDL arts for was the same route as Mosley. Right. In other words, the Mosley, what Mosley was stopped. That was the route they asked for. And for me, that is a constant attempt to reproduce in the 21st century what Mosley did back then. It's stupid of them, isn't it? It is a bit stupid of them because even the police said, but that's the same route as well, Mosley. And I think we have to be clear that some in that element of the EDL is an experience of about their traditions of where they come, they come from. They've camouflaged it, but not well enough to stop our unity to say, you didn't, we stopped you then, we stopped you before, and we'll stop you in the future. But I would like to support that um, initiative by Mayor Luftaraman that says he wants to say something positive about the community and then let them say, we, we want thousands of people in the street, even if they're not come before that, to say we're celebrating their culture. And then they will have to say, we're against that. Mm. OK, um, well, Abdul Wahab, uh, UK Apache, uh, performed on the demonstration on Saturday and uh, we'd like to end the programme by giving him a chance to give us a taste of um, what he did for the crowd. Take it away. OK, Bye. this camera? Yeah. Going for the old school, taking it back to the 90s. Nani ni woi, zigga nigga na na no no no, people in a England, people in a London, people in a Jaycan, people in a any land, watcha, we don't want no racism, Lord in a London, well, we don't want no racism, Lord in a England, well, we don't want no violence, Lord in a London, well, all we want is peace love and unification well this is a message lord i'm sending to the nation thank you very much <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> thanks very much that's all we've got time for in this uh, week's program and you'll be glad to know that if you missed x factor you've got a much better show here so do rejoin us for uh, future episodes of the politics and media program <laughs>